Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and all wise, eternal Father, yes. Lord, we come to you right now with bow down heads and humble hearts, Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for right now for another day, Lord, yes. another chance, Lord, to come to you in prayer, Lord. Yes. Lord, we praise you right now, Father God, because, Lord, we know it's nobody but you, Father God. Yes. Nobody but you, God, who gave us our homes, Father yes. God. Yes. Nobody but you, God, who blessed us, God, with another yes. day, God. Yes. Nobody but you, God, who blessed yes. our families, Father God. Yes. Nobody but you, God, who gave us our food, Father God, and our shelter, God. Yes. Nobody but you, God, who gave us our jobs, God, and nobody but you who prospered us, God. Lord, your word tells us, Lord, to trust in you, Father God, with all our heart, Lord, and lean, lean not on our own understanding, but to acknowledge you in all ways, and you would direct our path, Father God. Lord, so we trust in you right now for our healing, Father God. Lord, it doesn't matter what the doctor says, Father God, Lord, because we know, Father God, you have enough medicine, Father God, Lord, in your touch, God, that if we trust in you, Father God, that everything will be all right, Father God. So we trust in you, Father God for our healing, Father God. Father God, we trust in you to take care of all our needs, Father God, so it doesn't matter what our bank accounts look like, Father God, because you will provide all our needs in accordance with your riches and glories in heaven, Father God. So we trust in you, Father God. Lord, we trust in you to take care of our children, Father God, because we don't know what's going on with them, Father God. We can't be with them every minute, every second of the day, Father God, but we know that you will take care of them, Father, so we thank you for that as well, Lord. We trust in you to take care of all our family members, Father God, because we can't be everywhere, but Father God, you are there, so we thank you for that, Lord. Father God, we thank you for fixing our relationships, Father God, because the enemy is busy, Lord. So we thank you, God, for being that fixer, that heart regulator, Father God, because the enemy is always trying to steal, to kill, and destroy, God. That when one door closes, Father God, and one door opens, that the enemy is always there, Father God, trying to tear us down, Lord. But, Father God, you are there. All we have to do is trust in you, and, and Father God, you will make it all right, Lord. So we thank you, God, for just taking care of everything, Lord. We thank you, God, for being that fence of protection all around around us, Lord, because we don't know what to do but to lean and trust and depend on you, Lord. So thank you for always taking our hand, Father God, for always being there in the midst of trouble, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, even when we don't do right, Lord, you're there helping us, guiding us through the night, through the day, Lord. So thank you, God. Thank you. We love you, God. We give your name all the honor and all the praise because it all belongs to you. In the precious name of Jesus, Father, we pray, and we ask you to bless us and bless our family. In Jesus' name we pray, and our soul says amen, amen, amen and amen. amen.
Let us read the litany. And we will be reading the first portion of this litany. And it reads as follows. O oh God, you have heard the anguished cries of our ancestors. Their sounds echo and penetrate time to remind us of our four parents who were brutally captured and forcefully enslaved as they left the peaceful womb of their African homeland. Stony the ride we trod. O oh God, you have seen the millions of dark bodies buried beneath the tumultuous waves of the deep. Men and women who held the seeds of greatness. You have seen women's dreams for a united family vanish as they were sold at auction blocks. You have seen the legacy of the Mexican American family decimated and demeaned by those who have attempted to control our destiny. Bitter the chastening rod felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Oh God, you have ignited the sparks within us into a blazing demand for freedom, equality, and justice. This quest caused Harriet Tubman sleepless nights as she led her people to freedom. It was an equality that Rosa Parks and civil rights activists fought for and gave their lives for. It was a justice that Martin Luther King Jr. stood for as thousands stood with him at the Lincoln Memorial. Yet, with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. O oh God, you have seen our tears. You have been pained by the evil of human hearts. Yet, you love humanity enough that you sent your only son to identify with the outcast, marginalized and rejected. As the cries of Jesus pierced your heart, so have the cries of the people different cultures in a different language. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, O oh God, you answered us during our exodus from Africa. You wiped away every teardrop during our exile and captivity. Our foreparents dared to dream that one day on these shores we will become politicians, preachers, educators, doctors, writers, scientists, artists, and so much more. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we meet thee. Our ancestors' hard work, their courage, their convictions, and their belief in you paved the way for our emancipation and education. But it is clear, you have liberated us. You have set us free. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God and true to our native land.
Amen. Amen. We will now have the reading of the Holy Record by Sister Shirley Hill, followed by the morning prayer with Sister Sherry Campbell. Good morning. Would you turn with me to Psalms, Psalms 100? Uh, and I'm hoping I'm talking into the mic. I have been ordered to talk into the mic. <laughs> make, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter his get into the gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. May the word, God's word for God's people. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for another day, a chance to make better decisions than we did yesterday, to make a wrong right, to tell family and friends I love you. Only you know each of our needs. Lord, someone here is in pain. Heal them as only you can. Someone is lost. Order their steps. Lord, watch over our youth. Show them that you are the way, the truth, and the life. With you, they can do anything. Touch our hearts, Lord. Let us not leave here today the same way we entered your house. Thank you for your blessings. In your loving name, I pray. Amen.
sky. No sky. The sky. The sky is the limit of what I can have. We are getting ready to have the moments of meditation by the chorus, and immediately following that will be the message by Pastor Aaron DeBines. At this time, let us prepare our hearts and minds that we pray with him and pray for him, and that we pray that through this word that our lives are changed. 
that we are delivered from some things, that some people are set free, and that somebody is saved today. Amen? Amen.
Last Sunday was Super Bowl Sunday. It's a very busy day. Most of us, many of us watched it or we followed the results. Uh, your team may, uh, may not have won. Mine didn't. <laughs> but uh, there ought to be an excitement in the life of the believer about knowing that God is my all in all. Is that your testimony today? You know, there are some people who have deemed that there is no God. The Bible has a name for them. Uh, but if you have a watch on or even the clothes that you have on, or even if you made them yourself, your clothes have a label in them, or at least they have a maker. Yes. Amen. 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 And if your watch, if your clothes, if your automobile has a maker and a manufacturer, it is my faith belief that Genesis 1 and 1 for me is irrefutable. In the beginning, God. I don't believe that all that we see is by mere happenstance. I believe that the word of God is true. God did it. And God is my all in all. And I'm thankful that in 2015, even in the month of February, that there, there are some people uh, who are not uh, so erudite and so sophisticated and so intelligent in their own thinking and mind they have deemed that there is no God. I'm glad that folks still gather at 801 Sophia Street to declare, my God is real. I believe if I were to poll the room, there are some people who would testify that I was in something. Fill in the blank, whatever that something might be, but I was delivered, and I don't believe I was delivered by accident. But I believe, rather, I was delivered by the providential will of an almighty God. Amen. Here we are celebrating Black History Month, looking at the work of those individuals who labored uh, for 246 years without a paycheck. Amen. And this nation still lives on the back and the blood and the sweat and the tears of those ancestors who crossed the Middle Passage. Many of them who didn't make it, but you and I are the offspring of those who did make it. And uh, they would tell you, you, you are not as intelligent as you think you are if you think it just happened that way. God is the joy and the strength of my life. <laughs> he moves all pains, misery, and strife. He promised to lead me, never to leave me. And he never, ever comes short of his word. I've got to fast and pray. Stay in his will every day. Try to keep my life clean. Hallelujah. Because God is. Amen. Give the choir some more. Come on, get, put it up. Give it up for the choir. This male chorus. Sister Phyllis and Sister Karen, thank you for whipping these men into shape. They couldn't do it on, on their own. <laughs> I, I know a little bit about me, and I, I'm one of those things. <laughs> can't live with us, can't live without us. <laughs> Amen. Bless. There is a word from the Lord. In the book of Galatians, Paul's letter to the church at Galatia, chapter number 6, Verse number nine, we find these words from the Lord. It's Galatia, Galatians to the church of Galatia, chapter number six, ninth verse. I'm going to read two versions of this. The first one might not be quite as familiar, but I guarantee you will be familiar with the other one. It reads like this. 
let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary. And now from the King James, a more familiar text, it says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Amen. The grass withered and the flowers fade, but the word of God lives forever. I want to share with us from the brief subject, but I believe it speaks to a certain you and me and a certain me and you. I want to talk about don't quit. Don't quit. A few years ago, German theologian and arch enemy of Adolf Hitler's Third Reich, Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote an interesting book entitled, The Cost of Discipleship. Now in this book, using both pointed and poignant language, Bonhoeffer addresses a matter, a phenomenon he calls and dubs cheap grace. Cheap grace as I understand it, occurs, if you will, when Christian ethic and action seems to be world apart, worlds apart. It is, in the words of James Brown, a church that talks loud but really doesn't say very much because talk by itself is cheap. He speaks to this do-nothingism kind of theology that's covered by a belief that it's okay to do any and everything you want to. You can live by the Isley Brothers Creed. It's my thing. <laughs> After all, Jesus paid it all at Calvary, so what else is there for me to do? But Bonhoeffer refutes such notion and calls for Christians to act in the world to do something to authenticate their religion so as to move from lip service, from rhetoric, from pomp and circumstance to being an active agent, a viable representative of our Christ in this world. In short, Bonhoeffer would agree with James, the older brother of Jesus, and declare that faith without works is DOA dead on arrival. Bonhoeffer and James would agree with our African ancestors who sang heaven, heaven. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. <laughs> to be an authentic representative of our Christ in the world is more than litanies, liturgical busyness, and an exercise in ecclesiastical etiquette. No, my brothers and sisters, to be a follower, a disciple of the field preacher of Galilee requires that we not only be active, but stay actively engaged in making the world, the, our communities, our little corners, a better place in which to live. Now, I bring all of this to our attention uh, this morning because being a follower of God, being an emissary for Jesus, is not an easy proposition. For this reason, some start out with a whole lot of vim, vigor, and vitality. They start out with enthusiasm. They start out excited. They start out with a full head of steam. But later on, they find out that following Jesus requires some blood, sweat, and tears. And it becomes necessary that you put some skin in the game if you're going to be a follower of our Christ. That's why I love the example of Mom Todd who we funeralized on yesterday. And I'm, I want to say, uh, after preaching for 37 years, since I was 15 years of age, I, I enjoyed yesterday's celebration. Yeah. A woman used of God to make her community a better place for nearly 102 years, and the place was packed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because people wanted to gather to give homage to this woman who had dedicated her life. And Fredericksburg is a better place Shallow is a better place. And that's what ought to be said whenever your day comes. And whether you know it or not, your day is coming. You do know that. 
gray space is reserved for all of us. And that reservation is without the privilege of cancellation. You got to leave here. You got to leave here one day. Shifting gears just a little bit, there's a story of a young boy who was born and grew up in the rough and tumble streets of Panama. And in order to survive, this boy learned how to fight just to make it. And he learned quite well. And at the tender age of 16, he turned professional. He was nearly unbeatable. He was seemingly invincible. And for the most part of his career, he won 72 fights and only lost one. He was relentless. He pressured his opponents. He pounded his opponents. He mauled his way to the top, and he gained many victories. Yet the person of whom I speak is not remembered, firstly, as the true champion that he was. And I would be the first to admit that it's not quite fair. But when you call the name Roberta Duran, the first thing that comes to mind for many of us is that infamous second fight with Sugar Ray Leonard in November of 1980, where in the eighth round, uh, in the eighth round, this man who was a champion among champions, considered pound for pound to be one of the best fighters they ever put on gloves and step inside a ring. But on that night, Roberta Duran whispered to the referee, but it was shouted across the globe, no mas, which is translated no more, I quit, I surrender, I'm throwing in the towel, it's over, good night, Irene. <laughs> but if you and I would be honest, if we would be transparent and candid, there's a little bit of Roberta Duran in all of us. Uh, we can identify with him, for in our text, Paul, the tent maker from Tarsus, in a letter to the church of Galatia, was concerned about defections about the early Christians who said no moss. When they heard about the lions, they heard about the fires, they heard about Nero and all of his insanity, they, many of them said no moss. And they sent in their resignations. They went AWOL and they stepped away from Christianity. And in an attempt to encourage the young church and in an attempt to stymie the resignations and defections, Paul reminds them that the path to Christian victory is not easy. But hanging in there and not throwing in the towel, not sending up the white flag, he tells them it's worth hanging in there. Paul agrees with the great song of the faith that says, serving the Lord will pay off after a while. See, God's time is not our time. God does not work by tick-tock time. You can't say on a certain date, circle it on your calendar, this is when my deliverance is coming. So there's TikTok time, which is Kronos time, and then there's Kairos time. Kairos time, really, the simple definition is when God gets ready. And there's some things in your life that you've been petitioning God to do for you and on your behalf. And God says, I'm not ready yet. But I like the line of that song that the choir just sang, when God gets through with me. When God gets ready, when, when Kronos and Kairos come together, when TikTok time meets God's time, God will move on your behalf. There ought to be at least one witness in this room. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while, but the reality is, on this journey, you will get tired. Anybody who says they don't get tired, it's evidence to me that you're not doing anything. <laughs> but if you're working in the kingdom, and if you're working with church folk, you will, underscore, will get tired. Some folk will make you tired. Some people have a spiritual, vampiric kind of uh, uh, existence where even when you get around them, you feel a little drained. <laughs> People can be mean sometimes. People can be low down and dirty sometimes. Uh, 
people can, can have such a, a, a bad attitude and be in, uh, ungrateful in their demeanor and ambivalent. You can do the best that you can and they won't even move. They'll frown at you. They're, that's why the song says, if when you give the best of your service, telling the world the Savior is come, be not dismayed. When men don't believe you, when men and women sit around like and say, oh, whatever. But he'll understand, and he'll say, well done. Unless, unless it is that you're working for the applause and the appreciation and the platitudes of people. And the Lord says there's a caveat, there's a place for that. Then you have your reward. People will give you their accolades and they'll pat you on the back, but that's all you got. The question then becomes, are you more concerned about pleasing God who has eternity in his hands or are you more concerned about what folks say? The song says serving the Lord will pay off after a while, not, not people. <laughs> Do I have a witness? Sometimes, again, I say people can be unkind. They'll minimize your accomplishments and maximize and magnify your faults, flaws, and failings as if they themselves don't have them. And when you deal with this, trying to be the best you can in the service of the Lord, in the words of Marvin Gaye, it's enough to make you want to holler and throw up both your hands. It's enough to make you want to pull a Jeremiah. You remember Jeremiah, a.k.a. the weeping prophet? who got tired, sick and tired, and gave his resignation, shut his Bible, closed his hymn book, and said, I'm through. No, he said, I'm through. You do know there's a difference between being through and through. Come on, come on, husbands, help me if you can. When your wife says she's through, you got a shot. But if she says, I'm through, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, you grammar experts not, may not be feeling me and get that, but I'm talking with good sense anyhow. Don't tell my mother who's a retired English teacher what I just said, but you know what it means to be through. <laughs> but then, as I understand it, Jeremiah, Brothers and sisters started to think of the goodness of the Lord. And yeah. Think about what he had and, what he, and not what he didn't have. Can I speak to somebody today who's concentrating on your deficits rather than singling in and, and, and looking at your assets? Why are you always talking about what you don't have? Count your blessings. Yeah. Name them. That's what they used to do in the old church. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way, put shoes on my feet, clothes on my back, food on my table. He made a way out of nowhere. You better learn how to count your blessings. <laughs> Jeremiah had given his resignation, but he started getting a little warm, fuzzy feeling on the inside. Every now and then, if you're, let me say it like we said in Alabama, if you're a true born child of God, every now and then, this ought to get real for you. It ought not just be what's on the program. It ought not be, we have never done it like that before. Well, maybe it's about time. <laughs> Jeremiah started to feel warm on the inside. As he thought of the goodness of the Lord and all that the Lord had done for him, brothers and sisters. And it was like fire. Shut up in his bones. In the words of that song that we used to sing in the old church, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just can't keep it. Every now and then you ought to <laughs> have, a, have a kind of experience with God as you have with your best buddy and you tell them stuff that you don't really want anybody else to know. Am I on your street yet? 
that something that occurs that you, 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 it moves on you to the point that, look, don't tell nobody else. You know, come on, help me now. Stop being stuffy and stodgy for a minute. Some things are so good, you can't keep it to yourself. Every now and then, let your relationship with God fall into the same category. <laughs> let it be like fire. Shut up in your bones. But my brothers and sisters, the truth of the matter is, every day, men and women walk away from ministry. Every day they walk away from church. They say, I've had enough. I'm, I'm tired of going to uh, the theater of religion. I got to be somewhere where you can be real. And there's a book and a, and, a, and a video that I commend to you. It's called Clergy Killers. And you hear about people, the, the clergy and people who work closely in the church who are dying with stress and heart attacks and, and, and all kinds of things like that because people are sometimes relentless and mean and, low, and of low moral code. So they walk away. But Paul says, I understand. I understand your propensity to want to get into your comfort zone and get away and you'd rather be on a beach somewhere but that's not the real world. So he says to them, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't lose heart. Don't take your eyes off the prize and don't let your enemies steal your joy. I remember in the Old Testament where Nehemiah is rebuilding the walls. Now they didn't help him but they came to him to stop him. But isn't that just like people? You, you, you're committed to a task, doing the best you can, and they don't offer one finger to help or assist, but they come to you with all of their prognosis about what they would and would not do if they were you. <laughs> Paul says, don't be weary in well-doing. But in other words, Paul was just simply saying, don't quit. Don't let those folk push you into a corner and make you, in the words of my ancestors in Alabama, lose your religion. Sometimes we wouldn't lose our religion. We say, they'll make me put my religion on a shelf. You ever heard that? That means you better watch out because I'm, I know in Christ we're a new creature and old things will pass away, but I'm putting on my old clothes. Come on, help me somebody. I, I believe there's some folks in here who, who who don't, don't only, they don't only just own a tuxedo or a long dress. You got some old clothes. Uh, oh, oh, God, have mercy. Uh, you know. uh, stop shucking and jiving. Come on, I know you by now. You got some old clothes. Look, let me tell you what. If somebody come and mess with your babies or your grandbabies, you will go into the closet. Can we be real for a minute? <laughs> you know where it's hanging up. You don't wear it that often, but you know. Uh, you move from your old house, but you still got your old clothes. Just in case. <laughs> Paul tells the Galatians and those of us here at Charlotte today, I know it's hard. I know it's hard doing good sometimes and not being appreciated, undervalued, but it's a good thing, and it's a good thing to do good all the time. Because uh, there's a Mexican proverb that says, they, they buried us. They buried us with their meanness, with their nastiness, but they forgot that we were seeds. In other words, they put the rabbit in the briar patch. That's why, that's why Maya says, you write me down in history with your twisted lies and all of that. But I'm going to rise because I'm made like that. I woke up like that. That's the way he put me together. Don't you allow people to 
lower your divine standards of what God has set for you to be and to become. Uh, you're going somewhere. And some people will declare by their ignorance and their ignorance, that's the confluence of ignorance and arrogance. You know, not only are they ignorant, they're arrogant with it. I don't know, and I don't want to know. And there are some people like that, and you got to learn to leave them behind. But you cannot allow the haters and their negativity to prevent you from being what God wants you to be and doing what God wants you to do. You only have a certain amount of time. And you wasted enough, if you're like me, trying to be diplomatic with people who, who refuse to be uh, used and coerced by the instruments of diplomacy. So this is what you got to do. You got to learn, help me somebody, to shake the haters off and keep on stepping. Don't be weary. Don't, 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 don't quit. Don't, be, don't give in to your moments. Everybody's going to have a bad hair day. In every life, the, the rain will come. But don't allow the rain to make you feel like Brooke Benton. It's raining. But it's just raining in Fredericksburg. But the devil can get you in a trick bag and make you think it's raining all over the world. But then I like what he says in that uh, second, that B part. I'm walking through the text. The reason you can hold out and the reason you should hold out is because of what appears next. There's a due season. You don't know the date that God has already circled, but he circled it. Due season is the day, deliverance day, when God is going to do what only God can do. But he expects us. That's why Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord. In this hocus pocus, instant, snap your fingers society that we live in, a whole lot of folk want God to be a cosmic bellhop. We want God to be hop C. We want to say chop chop and clap our hands and say, God, move on this right now, right quick, fast, and in a hurry. But that may work in the movies, baby. But that's not how God works. That's why the ancestors said he may not come when you want him. But keep on waiting. Due season. Anybody in here know that due season will come? Weeping may endure for a night, but due season. A whole lot of folk can't hold on uh, during the night season in their anticipation of the due season. But I've come by here to reiterate the tent maker from Tosses' word to say to you, hold on and don't quit. I suspect that your due season is closer than you think. And wouldn't it be a shame for you to quit now and then find out later how close you were? Troubles don't last. Always. Always. In due season. I do, D-U-E, do, that's, that's, that has to do with time. But I, I, I like to play on words. There's a D-E-W season. The do of Herman. Where God allow some moisture to hit your dry places. In due season. God, God will bring precipitation to your desert. God will provide an oasis in your Sahara. God will make a way out of no way in due season. Spread it like you want it. In due season. I, I like first responders and what they do. I, I admire them. Any fireman, any policeman in here, former policeman. I don't know Nick was a former policeman. Anybody MP in here? We got all these military people. I appreciate what you do. Amen. All right, Brother Bird as well. 
I appreciate what you do. I couldn't do it. I don't have the temperament for it. Amen. Amen. I, God bless you. But those people who succumb to fire, uh, not to make light of the situation, I, I, I couldn't imagine being in an inferno, uh, engulfed totally by flames from floor to ceiling and, and not knowing any way out. But a lot of times, they, they find the victims uh, at the doorway. A few feet, sometimes inches away from safety. And, 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 and they say that because the, the difference in the heat level from the floor to five, six feet up can be literally thousands of degrees. It can be so hot that it, but in, in the, with a fire and the sense of panic, uh, you, people stand up and they breathe in that fire. It burns their lungs from the inside and they die right there on the spot. Yes. But from a spiritual standpoint, uh, there, there's a similarity. A lot of times we end up being close to where God wants us to be, but close only counts in hand grenades and horseshoes. 99 and a half won't do. You remember the rich young ruler that Jesus encountered. He asked the master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he went through those commandments and he said, I've been doing all of that since I was a young boy. Oh, yeah. I've got all of that taken care of, dotted every I, crossed every T. But Jesus said, you lack something. A lot of times it's not 15, 20 things, it's just that one thing. What is that one thing in your life that God still wants to tweak? Oh, yeah. What is that one area of your life that you have tried to keep Hidden from God. <laughs> you know you can't, you can't hurry God and you can't hide anything from God. God knows what you look like when you're naked. And I don't mean by clothes, but he sees right through us. He knows our uprisings and our down sittings. He knows our thoughts are far off. He knows everything about me. That's why I love him. He loves me like no other, and he knows everything about me. If we were at the, uh, uh, um, one of these talk shows and they have these cue cards, I would say shout now. I would hold up a cue card because maybe you didn't hear me. I said he knows everything about you. Thank you, Sister Montgomery. Wave your hand in the air and wave it like you just, he knows everything about me. Everything I've done, Lord Jesus. That woman sitting there, would leave me if she knew everything I'd done. <laughs> y'all put me out if y'all knew everything I'd done. And I wouldn't want to preach to you if I knew everything you had done. <laughs> but he knows. <laughs> Nitty, he knows all about me. And yet he loves me. Praise his holy name. That's why I love him so. <laughs> That's why I shout, can't nobody. <laughs> I ain't even ready to go there yet, but it just sounds good to me. Like Jesus. <laughs> he walks with me. I got one more point and I'm gone. Your due season is closer than you think. So don't throw in. Don't, don't quit. Don't, don't, don't throw in the towel. Don't surrender now. You're closer than you think. My third point comes right from the text. Paul says to the Galatians and to us, you will, we will reap a reward. You will reap a reward. You will reap. Not maybe. Now I'm from Alabama and I'm a little slow. But when I used to first get those emails from Nigeria, <laughs> oh, you got them too, huh? They said, you got $10 million. Just send us $200 and all your information. I didn't send it, but I was hyped about it at first. I was spending money, you know how you do, on Saturday night before the Powerball numbers come off. 
Thank you, Mavis. <laughs> now, let me just ask you this. Don't, don't answer. When you play make like and make believe with the Powerball numbers, do you tie it to the church too? All right, just, just ask, you know. Yeah. And do you give anything to your pastor? If I were you, I would. <laughs> You need to bless the man of God. <laughs> and I'm joking about it, but I believe in that. I, I, I reach out to my pastor even now, and it's not even about he has more than I got. But that's not even the point. Every now and then, when God blesses me, I bless my pastor. Amen. Amen. It's not anniversary time, and I'm really not. This is not a commercial. I'm just telling you what the word says. Amen. Amen. That you ought to be a blessing to somebody else besides you, but especially those who are the household of faith. Amen? Amen? Almost there, almost there. We will reap a reward. If you hold out, if you hold on a little while longer, thank you, Deacon Turner, he will. And the thing I like about him is that he will not just wait until you get to your heavenly home, but he likes to pass out Scooby snacks. <laughs> Every now and then, he would give me something to hold on. You know, something that would satisfy me, like a Snickers bar. I'm still on the fly on the road, but he'll give me a spiritual Snickers that will hold me over, tie me over, till I get to the dinner table. Sometimes in the midst of, of tough situations, he, he, he would not necessarily deliver me from the trouble, but he allows me, in the words of David, to feel his presence while I'm in my stuff. I got to go. I just want you to hang tough. I, I just want you to man up and woman up. I, I, want you to, I, want, I don't want you to wimp out. I don't want you to throw in the towel. I don't want you to quit. I want you to hang on in there. You're almost there. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing, you down a bit. Rest if you must, but don't you quit. Paul didn't quit. Paul, Paul didn't quit. Pa Paul didn't quit. He, he, he was shipwrecked, but he didn't quit. He was snake bitten, but he didn't quit. He was jailed, but he didn't quit. He was lied on. He was, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was put in all kinds of situations and circumstances, but he hung in there. He did not quit. He even leaves on record, the race is not for the swift, nor the strong, those who endure to the end. You need to hang around some folk who have endured. You need to stop hanging around folk who only want to eat cotton candy at the Georgia Fair. You need to, to be around some people because you can get some strength through osmosis. Just by being around certain folk, some things can rub off on you. Maybe that's your problem. You are an eagle but you've been hanging around vultures. And God can't bring it out of you till you change your company. There's only two things that happen. You can, you can, you can, as an eagle, change those vultures into eagles. But those vultures can take your eagleness away from one of them. You got to hold on. I don't know what you're going through, but God sent me with this message for you. This is 
This is the Lord's letter, not just to Galatia, not just to shallow old site, but to you. It's got your address on it. It's got your email. It's been he hit sin and told me to say it because somebody in here is on the verge. Somebody in here is on the edge of your seat. You're, about, you're almost, to, almost ready to lose your mind up in here, up in here. But the Lord sent me by to tell me and you <laughs> to hold on. Uh, just a little while longer. I got to leave you a reason Paul could say hold on. And I thank God as we celebrate black history this month. Your grandma, your big mama held on. If you knew what she had to go through to put you through Virginia State, to put you through Virginia Union, to put you through Elizabeth City, to put you through the places that you've been and standing on her shoulders, mm, you would see her in a whole different light. But she didn't raise a fool and she didn't raise a wimp. So why is it that you... You're always complaining every time a little mole here comes your way. He's trying to make you, in the words of Marvin Sapp, stronger, wiser, and better. And you're resisting because you're giving over to a wimpy attitude, but you've got to learn to say the trouble, bring it. you got to learn to say to your heartaches, come on. You may walk over here, but you're going to limp back. You got to learn to say, you, you just looking at me, but I'm not by myself. For he walks with me. He talks with me. And he promised never to leave me. I'm not by myself. Don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not alone. I always travel at least four deep. Come on, help me now. Uh, you know, I, I got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Bring it. <laughs> but he's with us. And if he's with us, we can hang in there and get our reward. Paul knew what he was talking about with all that he went through. But moreover, he was talking about his Christ, Brother Hilliard. His Christ. Isn't, isn't he the, the poster boy, if you will, of hanging in there? Lord, have mercy. He hung in there. Hung in there from the sixth to the ninth hour. <laughs> hung in there with nails in his hands, hung in there, with nails in his feet, hung in there, being pierced in the side, he hung in there and he would not come down, he would not come down, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. The door is open. Maybe there's somebody today. The Lord is moving on your heart. The Lord is knocking on the door of your heart saying, you're not alone in what you're facing. He's saying, I got your back. I got you. I hear you saying, Reverend, you don't know what I'm dealing with. I don't care what it is you're facing. He's bigger than all of that. Come on, sir. Come on, my brother. Come on, my brother. Praise the name of the Lord. Put your hands together. Thank you, man. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hold me, my brother. Ready to go with you. Yes. There's room, I tell you. There's plenty of good room. give the benediction but before repeat after me I get tired, I get tired but I won't quit, but I won't quit. Folk, will talk about me. folk will talk about me 
but I won't quit. I'm God's person. God has my back. I will not quit. Receive the benediction now unto him who's able to keep us from falling. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. God bless you. Go in peace.